What have you done? Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. This may not be pleasant, so if any of you don't want to come, say so. What's the creepiest line of dialogue you can think of for a film called Hands of a Stranger? Gee, mister, you got strong hands. Fortunately, this is actually the story of a concert pianist. I play the piano and I don't think I'm a sissy. Who, following a car accident, has another pair of hands grafted onto his wrists and becomes a killer. A series of tragedies with one thing in common, the human hand. If that sounds familiar, then it's because this is the fourth and so far last version of Maurice Renard's novel, The Hands of Orlac. What we've done has never been done before. It's a triumph for us. The 1924 and 35 versions, starring Conrad Veidt and Peter Lorre respectively, are horror classics, and this is a really solid, grotesque story. But... It can't always work, Gil. Sad, but true. Well, mister, how did you like it? There are only so many ways you can screw up a good story, but one of them is to turn it into a series of angry exchanges... You're not a doctor! You're a monster! A selfish, crazy monster! ...between people who are going to be angry whether the line demands it or not. I don't even know about Mother Goose or the weak people in the Glen! You try saying that angrily. Anything else? In fairness, the actors are fighting a bigger problem, which is evident even when they're talking about the film's primary focus. Hands. Amazing things when you think about it. Is that all you have to say? A genius device of flesh and bone that can paint a beautiful picture, control a scalpel, press a trigger. The writer's approach to dialogue seems to be, what's the longest way of saying this? I find it valuable to get as many details as possible before minds have become colored by the uh, calmness and disinterest born of time. Now imagine every line is written like that. Beautiful, perhaps, but monotonous. As if the characters are thumbing through a thesaurus. Yes, I see I shouldn't have put it that way in your present state of mind. As if the writer is crossing out words from a dictionary going, Oh, these are great. I'm going to use all of these. Please, Doctor, I saw your little outburst of perfectionism in there, and I'm sure you have several million words on the ideals and objectives of medical science, but all I'd like to know is what happened so I can start an accurate report. But it's not just the length of the lines, it's their number. <sighs> How can you blame anybody for this? Simple scenes turn into endurance marathons of characters endlessly exchanging this needlessly florid garbage. Are you trying to ease me into acceptance of a failure, Doctor? This is the most overwritten film I've ever come across. But medical science gave me a new pair of hands, hands from another body so that I can play again. Why is this man retelling the plot? It's not a complicated film. I suppose I can create an acceptable story. I'd say you could just excise all of the dialogue, but when the director tries his hand at visual storytelling, it lapses into incomprehensible. <laughs> Plus, the changes made to the story aren't brilliant. Pianist Vernon has lost the ability to play after the transplant. Sort of feel like he's not trying. And his hands were mangled. If it wasn't for the surgery, he wouldn't have hands at all. Vengeance on everyone he thought destroyed his ability to create music. Ungrateful, but I'll buy it. The problem is... Don't touch me! The first death is an accident and has nothing to do with vengeance. <coughs> Second death, also an accident. Ah, now the man kissing was a member of the surgical team. This is a revenge killing. Oh, Vernon, was that you playing? But we don't see it. In fact, we see none of the revenge killings. I killed him on my way here. Didn't seem important. How stupid I was. The nurse he forgets about completely, even though the film repeatedly stresses the four-person surgical team. Tonight, four people did everything in their power to help your brother. And the lead doctor he lures here with no apparent plan. You're interested in nothing but vengeance? Beauty is no longer important to you. On the contrary. Justice is a form of moral beauty. Except possibly to talk each other to death. 
Inevitably, Vernon is killed, and... We get a reference to Michelangelo's creation of Adam, as the film reaches for a visual pretentiousness almost matching the verbal. On the other hand, I suspect you of some premeditated diddling on the hillside. Seriously, the only thing I liked about this film is that the car crash is partly caused by them talking. I never thought about it like that. I suppose it's too much to hope that the filmmakers appreciated the irony. That guy is some kind of a nut! Thanks for watching. For new reviews every Tuesday and new specials every month, subscribe here. What other B-movies suffer from verbal diarrhea? Let us know in the comments below. If you don't like it, I'll quit, okay?